go. I love a good uh, vest. Love a good great. suit vest. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll start the conversation by asking, did, have you ever been down under? Like, have you visited Australia, like during the twilight years or, or, or any time? Yes, I have actually multiple times. I've got I've gotten to go to uh, Sydney, Melbourne, uh, the Gold Coast, yeah, uh, Brisbane. Is it is that right, Brisbane? Is yeah, Brisbane. Right? Yeah, up in Queensland. Uh, so I've I've I haven't been in a while. It's been probably maybe since two thousand sixteen. Right, think was the last time I went. Uh, but but I I I miss it. I miss it. I'd like to come. I'd like to come soon. Well, there's plenty of productions happening down under. Maybe you can get a gig. <laughs> yeah. Well, recently I had a producer reach out. He said, "Hey, uh, you want to shoot this movie I'm doing, and I'll send you the script." And he said, "I'm I'm in Australia," and I thought the movie took place in Australia. And I said, "Count me in." <laughs> and, <laughs> read the script. and and then I re I read it and I said, "Oh, it's a great script." And he said, "It shoots in um, Vancouver," and I said, "I thought it's shot in Australia." Oh He's like, no. Australia. <laughs> so well, we got. I'm so I'm actually going to do that film right now. I'm leaving tomorrow. But um, but uh, but but that's how much I love Australia. I hadn't even read the script, and I trusted my producer friend so much that I that he that I like his movies. That I said yes. <laughs> I said location, and I trust the producers. Tell the story. <laughs> uh, sounds like fun to me. Well, we'll count you in at some point when you get an actual script that's taking place in Australia. Yeah. I'll have to write one. I'll have to write one. Well, you should. I mean, you've you've directed before, but you're co-directing on fire this this new yes. film. How did you manage that? Was that an arrangement between you and Nick, or how did that come no, about? No, well, originally Nick was set to direct. I just was uh, going to go, you know, uh, as as the lead actor, run around the woods for a couple of weeks, and then <laughs> call it a day. Uh, it was a it was a good part, and I and I thought the story was very poignant and. Um, you know, I remember when I read it, it really resonated with me because I remembered the Australia fires and and uh, and how much land was lost there. And yeah. these fires are happening, you know, all too often in the news. And it, and it, and it really um, it really struck a, a chord with me reading the script and, and being based on true events and and uh, and giving the perspective of, of these of the victims of these fires and what they had to go through. Um so yeah, that 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 all made me feel like that was something a story I wanted to tell. And then and then when we were there filming, Nick ended up getting COVID, uh, oh. and and so they turned to me and they said, "Will you direct tonight?" Because uh, <laughs> Nick had COVID, and so with Nick's blessing, I did. And and you know, COVID doesn't go away in one day, so I ended sure. up finishing the film. And then, uh, and then we, when when we got to the editing room, Ed, Ed, Nick invited me in, and we ended up carving out the movie together. And and then, as a, you know, he turned to me and said, "Listen, you know, I, I'd love to 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 take credit for the film, but this was more of an amalgamation of both of us uh, working together. So let's celebrate that collaboration with a co co uh, directing credit." And I and I was touched, and I said, "Thank you." And I, and and that's how I I ended up co directing the film. I had directed before, so I felt yeah. comfortable, kind of you know, jumping in uh, where, where I was needed. But it, it ended up being another nine months after the film was wrapped. Uh, it was heavy on CGI and, you know, making making sure the score was right, you know, for that film. The score was gave, gave you all the gears of where you needed to be in the movie. Mm. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, it took a, you know, as an actor, sometimes it's easier. You go and you, you know, you give over your part and then you walk away and you go on to the next film. When you're directing, it's really, it's it stays with you for a long time. You're, you know, you're in pre-production, you're in production, then you're in post-production. So I'm sure. Uh, yeah, but I well, enjoyed it. I enjoyed the process of it, you know. Well, I, I remember The Vanished. Uh, you directed the the late, great yeah. Anne Heche. I mean, so you yeah. knew what you were doing. That's That's for sure, Peter. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I really enjoyed that film. I wrote that film, The Vanished, and, and working with the the great and talented uh, late Anne Heche was wonderful. Um, and uh, you know, we had some fantastic actors on that one. And uh, I, I love actors, so for me, being able to work with actors, uh, I enjoy it. Yeah. Well, I noticed at the start you mentioned the Australian fires. We have a lot of yeah. bushfires down under. It's sad. Yeah. It's just, it's a summer thing. And 
there was reference to the Australian. Uh, I heard the Australian uh, accent at the beginning of the movie, which was really yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We we when we were doing the opening credits, you know, um, we really thought you know, we wanted to make sure we that the audience knew this just. This was a, a local story that we were telling in, in, in California, but this is a worldwide problem, you know, mm. and, uh, and an issue that needs to you know, be solved. And, and so we ended up using a lot of news reports from different parts of the world. Uh, and, and of course, Australia was one yeah. of them. Um, yeah. Were you, um, have you ever been affected by fire yourself or friends or family or anything in, in directly? You know, I I I I just missed it. Uh, thankfully, uh, twice just in the past year. Okay. Um, I was in Oregon, and I was I was in a cabin in the woods with my kids, and then a, a week after I left, the big fire broke out there, and okay. uh, it was a mile away from this cabin I was staying in. I could have been trapped in that, and then uh, and then I was in Hawaii, and and two days after I left. Hawaii, the, the the fire started there, so uh, sure. I just I just missed that one too. So I've been fortunate. Well, yeah, it is fortunate. Otherwise, you know, we might not be talking right now. So yeah. that's yeah. exactly. Uh, was the I know it's based on a true story. Was it always called On Fire, or did you have other titles in mind? No, when I came on, it was called On Fire. Um, it's an, it's it's inspired by true stories. There was a couple of different, uh, I know, true stories that they took, and then they created a fictional character to basically tell the stories through. Um, yeah. But uh, but a lot of the things that are happened in the film were pulled from from events that actually happened, and then uh, and then we really tried to celebrate, you know, firefighters in the film at the end, and and yeah. Uh, and so we 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 sh we really shine a light on 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 nine one one operators and first responders and how tough their job is. There's the storyline of a, of this nine one operator who's helping our family through. That's through right. Yeah. So a lot of times they don't they don't get the credit they deserve. Uh, you know, because they're not the first ones running into the burning building or the the ones that are you know pulling out a gun. You know, but but they're they've got other people's lives on on the other other end of that phone. And uh, and so they're the first ones there for the victims for sure, and mm. it takes a lot of uh, of of focus and and um, you know a mindset because a lot of times they'll go home and not know if the people they were talking to made it through, you know. So that's got to be of a, course, a tough yeah. Thing. It um, must must be hard for them to stay in control. And and the actor who yeah. played the nine one one reporter was the the correspondent. She was great like i, yeah, I haven't actually, seen her before actually fouché she's a she's quite a talent you know yeah uh, um she was really good in the film it was fun fun being in the editing room and, and watching actors work <laughs> and being able to like, like you know piece their performances together and uh yeah i, I enjoy that having a say is nice you know well you have i mean i'll get to fiona and asha but lance yeah. henriksen you have yeah, some yeah. really heavy moments and nice moments with him. Uh, yeah. I, did you know him uh, before? Like, had you worked with him before or knew him? Because you, you guys you had know, chemistry. I mean, he's such a legend, Lance, and uh, and I knew of his work, but I hadn't. I don't think we've met before. Um, okay. But Lance really got me because you know his character is kind of older. Yeah. in the movie and he's kind of out of it and he'll go off on tangents and you know <laughs> I don't think Lance is method but when sometimes when you're coming in and he came in for like five or six days to play that part uh, a lot of times you come in and you 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 stay in the energy of that character you know so I'd be talking to Lance and and he'd be going off on tangents and I'm like, oh, <laughs> poor Lance he's kind of losing it a little bit and I guess he's great for this part though you know uh, and <laughs> You know, while we were filming, you know, same kind of he he would do the same thing, and then and then I saw him later on. He came in for like what they call ADR, like additional uh, voice recording. Yes. Um, and he was sharp as a tack. You know, had uh, this like energy, like a spring chicken. He was a completely different person. <laughs> so I was like, Lance, I thought you were losing it when we were on set. He's like, No, I was just staying in the energy of the character. I was like, What a pro! What a pro! Yeah, well, he was just being the traditional grumpy old man, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was great. He was so fun. He's such a fun guy. And, and, and he really I'll, I'll, movie too. 
Oh, yeah, he's, he's great in the movie, and I really like your connection, the, the, the brief amount of time you had together. Um, uh, but Asha and Fiona are also um, great casting. W were they on board when you came on board, or did you have a say in, in any of that casting? No, when I came on board, the, the cast was set, and, um, you know, uh, all the cast was there. So uh, I had known I, uh, Asher's work a little bit because – uh, I know Zach Levi a little bit, and I and I saw Shazam, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and Fiona Durf. I, I wasn't too familiar with her work, but I I had I was a fan of her dad's, you know. Sure. Just Brad yeah. is a is, is an incredible actor, and so I was excited to work with her. And and she's such a talent, Fiona, and such a, a she she's such a, a like a, like a smart actress and really kind human being, and, and makes me laugh. So we all got along really well, and. Um, you know, it's tough when you're shooting and then your your director goes down and, you know, but, but what was really wonderful was I think they looked to me as the head of the family, you know, as the father figure and, uh, and they trusted me and, and mm. we were able to kind of like work together and create some really wonderful moments. Um, and, and I think I'm really proud of, uh, of what we did with that film. Well, did you shoot in sequence or was it uh, no. all over? Because I really like the way it was edited and the production designer too. Um, yeah. did, did some really good work. Uh, I've got her name here, uh, Winona You. She's very good. Yeah. No, it was uh, it was all out of sequence. So, you know, we were kind of all over. Uh, and but you know, we we went on this journey together as a family. It was a very intimate film because once once you get to a certain part, you're really focused in on this one family, and yeah. it's just me, Fiona, Asher, and and my dad. You know, uh, played by Lance. At, 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 and and we go on this journey together and so as actors we were going on this journey together you know and and just like my my character who you know had this happenstance happen and in, in his life you know he starts off in the film and he's he's got bills and he's got his family and then all of a sudden this 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 event happens that kind of like you know becomes this uh, chaotic and and crazy it was kind of like art imitating life where the director got sick and that everything was kind of uh, chaotic and, and we yeah, were all yeah. kind of like you know bonded over that and was um, we moved forward together and um and we we kept the, the the wheels on the bus and uh and so we were able to finish strong and and everything worked out and, you, and you might become this chaotic. you might become this uh actor that can fix if a director goes down on any of your sets, yeah. call, call Peter. I mean, it's never it's never the way you want to, you know, come in. Because as, as a director, you know, prep time is so important when you're prepping mm. the movie and you've got... And so when you're coming in and, uh, you know, having to take over and you've got zero prep time and also, also I was the lead of the film, so I'm working at... And I'd go home, I have to work on my lines for the next day and also <laughs> my shot list for the next day and also figure out what the, all the scenes from all the angles of every character was about. So it was... Uh, it's not the easiest job uh, to just jump in, but uh, but but you know, I, I like I said, I've done directing before, so that that helped. Yeah. And I like to think I know stories now that I've been doing it for thirty years, how to tell a story. So, um, well, yeah, uh, I mean, how like I've been watching you since Dance for Texas, and I uh, can't hardly wait. Of course, you started young. How how have you embraced getting older as an actor? Uh, do you embrace it? uh i don't i mean i just turned 50 which is i i guess i don't really think about it often uh you know you're only as old as you feel i guess i i have friends that are you know in their 30s and i have friends that are 60 and they, it's all like a mindset of how old and how young you feel on the inside so uh i don't know i never really i don't really think about age i just think about time and experiences and like what am i going to do you know, what, what do I want to do with my life this year? What do I want to do in the next couple of months? And uh, I have a new son. Uh, he's he's a year old now. Uh, so Con that's exciting. That, congratulations. That keeps, me, that keeps me on my toes, <laughs> you know. Uh, a happy birthday for Sunday. Around. I think your birthday was just, just happened on Sunday. Yeah. So, yeah, happy birthday. Before Thank we you. wrap up, um, you've worked with some really strong female directors in the past, yeah. Rebecca Miller. Uh, comes to mind, Catherine Hardwick. Uh, I mean, do you think the change in Hollywood has is still progressing, or how how do you find diversity and and change in your you know in your years of being in the industry so long? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm glad to see more uh, diversity in the director's chair for sure. Um, but again, I I always just look at it like like for me, I I, I love uh, female directors. I grew up with three sisters, so I get along with female directors. <laughs> I get right. along with male directors. You know, uh, you know, when you're competent in the job, you know, if you're you're male or female, it doesn't really you really it really shouldn't make a difference. Uh, but but they, the, what I'm excited about is they're being afforded more opportunities as before they weren't, you know? So mm -hmm. I think that uh, when they're in the director's chair, I never look at it as a male or a female. I just look at it as the director. But but I am happy to see more diversity there and, and more females in the uh, directors in the chair. I, I started my career, um, well, my first film, like you said, was Angela, uh, it was a film called Rebecca Angela. Miller. Miller, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so my first director was a female and that was 30 years ago. So, uh, so that's pretty cool that my, my, my first experience was with a female director. If you weren't an actor and a performer, a writer, director, what would you be doing? Would you, what career would you like to do other than what you are currently doing? Um, I mean, I, I toyed with being a lawyer for a minute. Uh, I was going to go to law <laughs> school. Uh, I don't know why I'm laughing, but fair enough. Well, I think it's because as a lawyer, when I was younger, I would say to my parents, I want to be an actor. And they would kind of laugh like you just laugh. <laughs> they would laugh at me saying I wanted to be an actor. <laughs> now you're laughing at me saying I want to be a lawyer. But uh, but, to the, you know, it was like saying that I, you know, uh, saying I want to be an actor was like saying I want to go to Mars because it was just like so we knew no one in the business. And, you know, it was just a faraway dream. So next time they asked what I wanted to be, I said a lawyer. And that got a lot. Of, oh, my son's going to be a lawyer. <laughs> wow, a lawyer in the family and it's a prestigious job. Uh, and I think I like the idea of, it's similar to acting in the sense that you, there's, a, there's a jury, which is kind of an audience and you have to stand up in front of that jury and you- Very a true. Performance there and, and, uh, and I like to argue, apparently. <laughs> you know, I like to argue points. Uh, so there's something I'm passionate, I'm Italian. So I, I like to, you know, uh, have, I have a passion for- uh, points or, or, or some when I have a point of view you know I try to get passionate about it so I thought that could be a good career and then I went to and I, and I worked with a law firm and they never went to court and I, they were always in their offices and I said well when do you get to go to court you know they said no uh, we don't we don't if you go to court it's too risky so you know they said our whole thing is don't go to court like you want to find precedences <laughs> and you want to settle before court right. nobody wants to go to court and I thought well I want to go to court, you know, because that's where that's where I thought this job was. And they said, sure. Yeah. Well, no, that's that's like uh, the movies, kid. They said you should go. You should go be an actor then or something. So I thought, OK, <laughs> so I went and started studying acting instead. And uh, my parents thought, well, why are you transferring out of out of uh, school to study acting? And I told them because I'm really shy and I have to get up in front of the jury. And so, uh, you know, in order to to be a lawyer, it's good to take acting lessons. And they didn't know any better. So they they thought uh, they said, OK, and then I ended up becoming an actor. I think my well, parents are still waiting for me to be a lawyer, though. <laughs> well, well, well done. Yeah, you've never looked back. I, I've really liked your career over the years. Oh, thanks. Um, to wrap it up, in your in your own words, as the director and star, um, why should people watch On Fire? Well, it's I'll tell you one thing: you're not going to fall asleep in this movie. You know, exactly. It's not a, yeah. It's not a slow movie. It's it's a it's a nail biter of a film. It'll keep you on the edge of your seats. It's a poignant story. It celebrates firefighters. It's a good family film. Uh, it's a family that's working together to overcome something, which is a. Uh, really beautiful to watch with mm. your family. Um, and it's an enjoyable film. It, it, at the end of the day, there are a lot of takeaways in this film, but uh, but 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 you'll still have a good time watching it, you know? Exactly. Well, thanks a lot, mate. Um, nice to meet you, and I hope we cross paths down.